Welcome to my views and news, some new stories from Sudan for you. We were on the 15th of April. War broke out between the rapid support forces and Sudanese army. Talks underway in Jeddah, Saudi Arabia, mediated by Saudi Arabia and the United States. And reportedly some progress has been made. In the next uh, one to two days, we could see announcement of this uh, progress details for you. Secondly, viewers, uh, a former foreign minister of Sudan who worked with uh, Umar al-Bashir is missing. And rapid support force allied news sources claim that he is in the custody of rapid support forces. Thirdly, Al-Burhan appeared yesterday with his uh, soldiers. Uh, first time yesterday that we saw Burhan uh, in uh, open. Uh, he, he was seen publicly with uh, the SAF soldiers. And the video has been geolocated. Uh, the video was uh, very close. It, it was from very close to Sudanese army's headquarters in Khartoum. What is the message uh, which uh, Burhan tried to send uh, uh, through this video, which was released yesterday by Sudanese army? And where is Hamati? Is he really injured? And lastly, there are four viewers where. In clashes, uh, around 40 people were killed, including 25 Sudanese army soldiers. Fighting was not between Sudanese army and rapid support forces. It happened in South Darfur. Details for you. Firstly, viewers, uh, it seems progress has been made uh, in the talks between rapid support forces and the Sudanese army. The two are meeting. The representatives are meeting in Jeddah, Saudi Arabia. U.S. and Saudi Arabia are uh, supervising the talks, indirect talks being held in Jeddah. This is second round of talks. In the first round of talks, the two sides agreed on some principles. Uh, in this round of talks, they are going to agree if it happened on the modalities of uh, ensuring delivery of humanitarian aid and maybe ceasefire as well. Now, reportedly, some diplomatic sources say that progress has been made in the talks. The two sides could announce a ceasefire in the next 48 hours. Though we have seen several ceasefires announced uh, uh, in the last uh, uh, one month or so, but no ceasefire was practically implemented on the ground because ceasefires were without any agreement. This time, the two parties are reportedly getting closer to signing of ceasefire agreement, which will include the provision of uh, aid to the people, evacuation of aid, uh, safe humanitarian corridors, and reportedly. The ceasefire will be monitored by external observers or forces. This is the most important part that the two parties are agreeing to a ceasefire supervised by external forces. So we could see announcement of this ceasefire in coming hours reportedly. Talk still underway, no announcement from Jeddah, but some progress has been made there reportedly. Uh, secondly, viewers, uh, where is Ali Karti, former of foreign minister of Sudan, foreign minister of Umar al-Bashir, uh, secretary general of Sudan's Islamist party. When Umar al-Bashir was removed, his associates were removed as well. The party was banned. Uh, his associates were put in prisons too and some... Uh, uh, escaped uh, from a prison a few days ago from Khartoum. Ali Karti uh, is missing and some uh, new sources backed by the rapid support force claim that uh, Ali Karti is in the custody of rapid support forces. No official confirmation though. RSF uh, have been accusing Al-Burhan that Al-Burhan's uh, 
military government has been hijacked by the former Umar al Bashir uh, regime officials. And basically, they are running the show, and that Burhan is also an Islamist, an extremist. And that is why West should support, rapid support forces. RSF has been building this narrative. Uh, let's see where uh, Ali Kurdi's no official word from Sudanese army or from uh, rapid support forces. Uh, social media rumors are underway about his capture by rapid support forces. Thirdly, viewers, uh, uh, Darfur, where clashes uh, erupted yesterday, uh, in which 45 people were killed. It happened in South Darfur, near Al Nadif, in a small village. There, an armed gang was looting vehicles. Sudanese army arrived there. It chased armed gang members who entered a village. Fighting started and uh, 45 were killed in this incident, including 33 Sudanese army members and 22 from the other side. Uh, uh, it, it wasn't uh, fighting between rapid support forces and Sudanese army. There are several groups in Darfur, in different parts of Darfur. Uh, there is Sudanese army, rapid support forces, different militias, different tribal groups. And uh, as uh, the war started in uh, Khartoum, mainly Bari Mandarman on the 15th of April, gradually uh, we saw deterioration of a law and order situation in different zones of Darfur. We have seen uh, heavy clashes in Al Janina. West Darfur, Al Janina uh, has been destroyed, buildings, etc. And the clashes are not only between the Sudanese army and rapid support, but also between different uh, tribes. Because in Darfur, we know that it, it has a history of uh, ethnic violence. Decades ago, two decades ago, there, there was uh, ethnic violence, so tens of thousands were killed. Same should be happening now. And tribes are now taking sides. Uh, some tribal elders are starting to speak in favor of uh, rapid support forces. Some are expressing their neutrality. Others are silent. Some could be supporting the Sudanese army. Basically, we are seeing a very volatile situation in Darfur. If the war goes on and if uh, we see start of uh, uh, escalation in Darfur. Again, tens of thousands could be killed and this war will be deadlier and bloodier than what is happening in Khartoum, Bari and Umm Darman. Yesterday, we saw a statement from Ali Tijani, Abdul Qadir, Muhammad Usman of Misriya. He announced his support for rapid support forces. But in uh, Kardofan, we saw a statement from Misriya Homer Nazir, who announced uh, uh, to be a neutral. So, different tribes are taking different positions, which will lead to further a conflict in different parts of Darfur, a little bit in Kardofan as well. Uh, thirdly, viewers, uh, we have two clips for you showing uh, firstly the appearance of uh, Al Burhan, Sudanese army chief who suddenly appeared in front of Sudanese army headquarters in Khartoum yesterday. And uh, first public appearance of uh, Al Burhan with his fighters because his two earlier appearances were from inside a building where he was seen uh, holding a meeting with some of his uh, commanders. But this time he was seen uh, outside a building, standing uh, on the road, uh, talking to his uh, soldiers. The video was released after we heard that uh, rapid support forces had taken control of uh, Sudanese air headquarters uh, to the south of uh, Khartoum International Airport. 
So either it was a way of boosting the morale of Sudanese army or army is in a good position uh, in and near army headquarters. The video confirms perhaps that Sudanese army headquarters in Khartoum is under full control of Sudanese army. That is why Burhan is there. So either he was there inside the headquarters and he uh, came out or he was not there. From somewhere he uh, moved to the Sudanese army headquarters where the video was recorded. That just shows that Sudanese army is there. The claim made by rapid support force that they had taken control of 100% of Khartoum is not correct. If 100% of Khartoum, Bari Madraman is under rapid support forces, how did Burhan manage to reach uh, uh, very close to the army headquarters? So both sides making tall claims basically, not corresponding with the reality on the ground. Al-Burhan appeared uh, Hamati is missing. Rumors abundant that Habati is injured, but no confirmation. Uh, rapid support forces have officially denied that Hamati or his commander, his deputy, have been injured. But uh, he has not been. He has been seen just once since the start of this war. I did a video on that. He was seen uh, with uh, dozens of his fighters. Since then, he has been missing. So is he injured? Uh, let's see. If he is alive, we could see a video message at least from Humayati in coming hours. Two clips for you, one showing uh, Burhan's appearance, uh, Burhan appeared uh, in front of Sudanese army headquarters in Khartoum. Second video shows protest outside uh, the hotel where UN uh, envoy to Sudan is staying, Volker Perthes, head of UN's uh, transition uh, integrated transition mission and uh, some pro-army Sudanese protesters protested uh, a few hours ago in front of the hotel chanting slogans telling the UN envoy to leave the country. Why are people angry with Volker Perthes? Is it because UN is taking sides uh, or is it be because UN is not doing enough for the people? Yes, people say that uh, delivery of aid to the people of Sudan, in Port Sudan, in other parts of Sudan has been very slow. People are suffering. Tens of thousands are being displaced uh, internally, externally. UN's role so far has not been impressive. People are angry. That is why the protest was held outside the hotel where Walker Perth assisting. What are the two videos? Thank you for watching.